Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing and Reviews and How To, and on today's video, I'm going to show you how to test your power supply with varying different methods, ranging from the uh, downright silly to the actually quite proactive and actually a very useful tool. So, if you've got a power supply, you've got your PC, you've got it all connected up, and for some reason, press the power button, you've got nothing at all. Now, there's a lot of things you can check, but some of the simple things, obviously, make sure your power cord is plugged in and the power supply is switched on and also turned on at the mains. If you're pretty much sure that all of that is done, but you're still getting absolutely nothing, you can actually test your power supply in a very basic way, just by bridging some of the pins actually on the main 24 pin connector. So we've got a power supply here. I'm gonna show you basically how it's done. I would suggest if you're a little bit unsure about your power supply and whether or not it's actually good or not, it's probably worth disconnecting all of it from bits of your PC. So things like your SATA drives, your GPU, your EPS connector, and also the 24 pin main power connector, because we're gonna need that. Just disconnect it from your PC in its entirety, and that way you can rule out any short circuits actually within the computer itself. So once you've done that, let's head over to the power supply and see what we can do. So when it comes to testing the power supply, what do you actually need? Well. Realistically, all you need is a little piece of metal or some wire. Now, a personal favorite of mine is the paper clip. Paper clip is a very handy thing to do, and generally most households will have one. If for some reason you can't find a paper clip, something like a twist stick, which are those little metal wraps that you put around cables, which have got a plastic sheath around the outside, those are actually really useful as well. All you'll need to do is to remove some of the plastic covering on the metal and just bend over the pins on the end just to give it a wider surface contact area. And that is going to basically be the same as a paper clip. On the other hand, if you want to be a little bit more proactive, there's other things you can do which you can actually purchase to have in your PC toolkit just ready for when this kind of situation arises. Now, something very simple, which is actually included with quite a lot of power supplies on the market, is one of these simple testers. So this is a 24-pin PSU tester. And as you can see, it's just got a section bridged across to simulate the PC being turned on. Some manufacturers have them with no cable, it's all done internally. Those can be used as well. If you want something a little bit more elaborate, we've got something like this. So this actually has a switch which simulates the PC being turned on or off and is basically a variation of those previous designs. If you want something a little bit more elaborate and actually something that's going to give you a little bit more value and also be able to tell you the exact voltages on the individual rails, a power supply tester such as this one is actually a good shot. You can pick these up very inexpensively. I'll put some links in the video description and these have got options for testing the various ports, the 24 pin, your SATA, Molex, PCI Express etc. On the other hand if you want something which is bang up to date and will actually test all of your connections including the very latest and greatest in the HPower 12 plus 4 including all of the sense pins then there's this one from Thermaltake. This is their new Dr. Power 3 which they've sent over to us free of charge for review purposes and actually just to keep here to test power supplies. So this is actually worth checking out. It is a lot more expensive than the other methods. Obviously a paper clip is free, but if you want something a little bit more professional and you want to be able to test your new expensive PCI Express Gen 5 connections, this is definitely worth a look. Some other considerations you might want as well, because modern power supplies quite often have like a switching mode or something like a zero DB or zero RPM fan, like a smart fan, Really, when you turn this on, you're not gonna get much out of it if you just bridge the connections, other than potentially you'll see the fan spinning on the PSU. If you don't have something like that, it's actually worth getting a separate device, such as this. This is a Molex fan splitter, and just use a standard PWM fan, plug it into one of these connectors, and this will be powered from the power supply, and that way you can have some visual response. You can, of course, use LEDs or anything you like, as long as it's on either SATA or Molex connection, you can plug it straight into one of the leads off of your power supply. So let's start off with a very basic version of this. So we're gonna use either our twist stick or you can use the actual paper clip. And what you wanna do is to look at your power supply cable, the main 24 pin. And if you look at the top section, so the top is the one with the actual clip on it. What you're gonna to wanna to do is to count in the connectors from the far side there to connections four and five. So starting from the end, work your way in. So one, two, three, four, and five, and then put in your little piece of metal in between those pins. And you should end up with something which looks uh, a little bit like that, which doesn't look the best, but this will get the job done. So next we're gonna try the power supply. So we're grab our power supply. We'll turn it into the off position to start off with and plug in your mains cable. And now if we turn on the power supply, power supply clicked, but as you can possibly see, 
the fan isn't moving, but we did definitely hear a click. So there is some signs of life to it. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is to plug in something to one of the SATA or Molex connections, just to validate there is actually power coming through the power supply. So now we've got our power supply. We've still got our pin in here. We've got our Molex powered fan controller, and also we've got our fan connected. So we'll set it about halfway on the fan speed and we can turn on our power supply. And there we go. You can see our fan is spinning and actually we've got an LED on here as well to verify there is power going through. So that's actually pretty handy. At least you know your power supply isn't completely dead. But how do you know that all of the levels actually on all the cables are actually at the right ratings? So that's when we go on to the more advanced testing. So now we've got our power supply and we've got as many connections as we can plugged into our basic tester. So let's turn it on and see what we get. So this is going to give us some pretty good stuff here. An annoying bleep which is uh yeah what it is got green lights there so it means that our voltages are okay and we can take a look closely at the led just to make sure that everything is all good we've got a power good of 130 which is probably a little bit low for this particular unit because the power good signal has become better as power supplies have got newer so this is actually throwing up an error saying that the power good is actually too fast which it isn't but anyway Pretty decent, gives you an idea of the voltages and we've got some reasonably stable voltages there. Sorry, I think it looks okay. So let's try it now with the latest ATX 3.1 tester and see what our results are. So now we're gonna do a slightly more elaborate test. Now we've got all of our connections connected from our modern power supply. So we've got an eight pin PCIe. We've also got our 12 plus four or high power connector for modern graphics cards. So this is actually gonna be able to test a lot more things on our power supply and also isn't gonna have a power good failure because of the quicker power up times. So let's turn the power supply on. And first of all, it boots up. So this is just ready to test the power supply. Press the button. And the power supply is turned on, we can hear that now. So now we can read out our voltages. So we've got 12.1 on the 12 volt, we've got 5.14 on the five volt, and 3.39 on the 3.3. So that's absolutely great. And also we've got 5.16 on our standby. And also our power good is 128, which is absolutely fine for modern power supply. And we can press the button again. And we can go through the individual ones. So our CPU, 12.2. Our PCIe is currently configured for 450 watts. So if you're not too sure what your PCIe or your new 12 volt high power connector is actually wired for, it will tell you on here. So 450. Press it again and our Molex is giving out 12.1 and also 5 volts, 5.15. And there, that's turned the power supply off. So you can see if it turns on, power good. Cycle through your settings and check all of your voltages and also the wattage for your GPU connector. And if you turn the power supply off, That's what the error message would be like. So if you've got a bad power supply, this is the noise you're likely to hear, which you definitely don't want. So there you go, actually a pretty decent tool and being able to actually check the correct wattage of your PCIe Gen 5 connection, I think it's actually a very cool addition to the Thermaltake Dr. Power 3. So there you go, there's some pretty cool ways of testing your power supply from the uh, downright basic to the uh, slightly more elaborate and being able to check on the wattage of that PCI Express Gen 5 connection is going to be a, a bit of a game changer, I think, for PC diagnostics. Anyway, hopefully this video has been useful to you. If it has, smash the like button. If you want to see more content like this on a daily basis, maybe consider hitting subscribe and the chime notification. That way you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.